Hey, we're going to do another little project. Uh, we're going to do this one together, but you do need a picture of you. And I'd prefer you go take a new one for this project because you need to be on a solid background that's lighter than your head. So a wall would be the most ideal thing. Go find a white wall. You can have a little bit of texture to it. That's okay. Um, a yellow wall, you know, whatever. Your garage door, it's fine. Um, but anyway, get a picture of yourself. Open it up. And depending on what you're on, if you're working on a Chromebook, you might want to resize your picture. I'm on a computer right now, and so if I were to actually look at my picture at 100%, this is at 25%, then um, it would be pretty big. I mean, like, let's see, on my navigator, if I go to 100%, I mean, yeah, it's that big. Oh my gosh, let's not look at my teeth. Anyway, so not really the ideal size. So you can make this a little bit smaller. Just get an image, image size, and then you can resize that a little bit. I'm just going to go 1,200 pixels on my width just so it's not as big. And if you're on a Chromebook, definitely resize because, you you know, the bigger it is, the slower a Chromebook runs. So, all right, so I've got a picture here. Uh, I suggest taking it kind of with your face a little bit to the side just because front on, sometimes you lose some of your features. Or, you know, you people who have those fancy ring lights, you know, like let the light hit you or whatever, since you really probably can't take this picture outside. Anyway, we are going to combine several adjustment layers to make kind of a cool pop art thing happen. So we've got our main layer. And then what we're going to do next is we are going to um, add a white background behind this layer. So I'm just going to double click this layer and hit OK so it's a regular layer. And then I'm going to create, well, a solid fill layer. Let's go to the adjustment layer, go to solid color, and choose white. If you're on Photo P, you have a button for white. So go ahead and hit OK, and let's put that behind your other layer. So again, your layer has to be unlocked. In Photo P, they're already unlocked, so you should just be able to wiggle those around. All right, so I've got this all going on. Everything is ready. Um, now, to my layer zero, we're going to add a threshold adjustment. Okay, so we did this before, add a threshold adjustment. You want to kind of fix it so you don't have too many shadows on your face. You have to pull this back. Oop, wrong way. Pull this back. Now, there's going to be some shadows. I mean, you got to have a little bit. That's fine. Okay, something like that, and everybody's will be a little bit different. Um, and then remember, we can add a layer mask to the actual picture layer. So I'm going to add a layer mask and paint in black over areas that you want to get rid of. So, like, I've got a little bit of a, like, stuff on my cheek and my double chin and my lines under my eyes bless my heart um, anyway some of these little extra little dots that you want to get rid of out there you can kind of touch it up just a little bit on that main layer now we need to have that white background layer behind it or we'll see invisible spots that's why we have a white background back there okay now we're only using one picture for this so I'm not going to clipping mask anything in because it's all just one image okay now here's another adjustment layer that we haven't used yet and it is at the bottom called gradient map. It's right by threshold. Gradient map lets us map a gradient to basically reassign colors. So we're going to be reassigning the black and the white. All right, so I've got my gradient here. Um, it's going to come up in the properties. And I'm going to click on it and change these colors. So really, it should be black to white, because that's what our gradient looks like, right? So you want to reassign the black and the white. So I just chose the black and white one to start with because it makes it easier to see. So now you're going to decide we want our black to be not quite black, but almost black. So gray. <laughs> and the reason is the thing that we're going to do next does not affect black. Like you can't have pure black. Okay. So it's almost black. And then this other side, once you choose a different color other than white for a threshold effect, so like a pale pink or a pale yellow or something that you like, um, you know, pale but not white. Something like that's good. Okay, a color that represents your personality will be fine. And hit OK. So what we've done is we've just remapped the black and the white using the gradient map. Okay, next up we're going to add a pattern layer. So remember, we added a solid color layer earlier. Now we're going to add a pattern layer. So you're going to click on that. Um, and then we have to choose our pattern fill. And if you're in Photoshop, you've got lots of different patterns to choose from because you've got a lot of categories to choose from, like color paper, for instance. And I've got all these different ones. I'm going to go with this one. 
Um, but you've got all kinds of different ones that you can look through and find. If you're in Photop, let me go to the finished file and I'll show you in Photop. On the pattern fill in Photop, it looks like this. Okay, you have a pattern button here. It'll have some patterns. You can scroll down to access patterns or you can load patterns. And in the description, I'll add a place for you to load some patterns just in case you don't have very many in yours that you can use. And then there's a scale button to make your pattern big. So like I can make it big or I can make it smaller, however you want that to be. Okay, let me go back to Photoshop. We have a scale button here too. So I could scale it up, which is going to make them, you know, spread apart more and bigger. Or I can scale it down so I have teeny, tiny, tiny little lines. Whatever. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. We've got our pattern fill. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to mess with this little button here. This is your first introduction to this button. This is the blending mode button. Blending mode changes how the top layer blends with the things underneath it. When it's set on normal, you can't see through it. Now this is not the same as opacity. We are going to mess with the opacity too, but first we're going to mess with the blending mode. Blending modes have three areas, a darken, a lighten, and then some other little mix, okay? So the, the three I use most common are multiply, which gives me that effect, screen, which gives me that effect, and overlay, which is usually kind of somewhere in between. But in this one, the overlay, I can barely see the lines. There is also soft light which is almost like putting a soft flashlight of the pattern on everything. Hard light, which is going to hit it harder. You can play around with these blending modes. I'm going to go into more detail in the next video on blending modes, but just kind of play around and see what the different blending modes look like and then find one that you like. In Photoshop, you can put your mouse over the little button, just scroll your mouse button, and you can kind of see the different ones. Now we want to keep our color in there to some degree, so don't choose any that are going to put it straight back to black and white. Um, or that looks like really weird, you know. Okay, I'm going to go with pin light. I think that one looks pretty cool. And then if you want to, you can pull the opacity back. Like if you feel like it's a little too much texture, then you can pull that opacity back. But that's totally on you there. Okay, finally, let's just add your name. So you're going to click your type tool. Um, let's take the color from your picture. So choose a color from your picture somewhere so that it matches. And then pop your name in here. Uh, I would say use some sort of handwritten font um, that sort of looks like you wrote it by hand. Um, but, you know, rotate it around or warp it a little bit or whatever you want to do there. So there's that example. And then in Photo P, here is this example. Um, so basically, we have a white background layer. We have our picture. Um, and then we have a threshold adjustment layer, which turns it into that black and white and gets rid of a lot of the background. On top of that, we have a gradient map where instead of we start with black and white on the gradient and we switch the black to some dark gray and the white to whatever color you want your background to be. You're going to add a pattern fill and then adjust the scale of that pattern. And then finally, change the blending mode of that pattern to some blending mode that you think looks cool with your design. And then pull the opacity back so that the blending mode doesn't overtake your photo. And that's it. You're going to export this out and turn this in to let me take a look at it.